In today's video, I'm going to show you how to draw this reference photo. And we're going to spend some 20 minutes to establish the basic proportion and the structure of the head using a combination of the Loomis method and the Asaro method. So let's get started. For the tools, I'll be using a sketchbook Canson paper um, A5, so it's pretty large. And then I use my mechanical pencil, really cheap. This one is an HP pencil and I need a razor. So let's get started. As usual, I want to start with the Loomis cranium which is the circle and it represents the top part of the head. Make sure your circle is correct. At least the width and the height are equal. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but at least make sure the height and the width are correct. Then let's chop off the side of the cranium. And that side of the cranium actually ends somewhere around the edge of the eye socket where where the eyebrows end so let's assume that the corners of the eye socket will be around here around this this place and now let's look for the tilt of the head and to do that i usually search for the relationship between the top of the eye socket and the top of the ear. If you take that angle from uh, your reference photo, you're gonna see that it is somewhere here, like a straight line. And that gives you this kind of tilt of the head, but it's not enough. You have to draw the brow line. And it's just an extension of this line right here. You draw a straight line, this time a vertical line, to find the horizontal tilt of the head. So, after we do that, let's look for the side, the far side corner of the face, and try to identify the, the eye socket. So, the eye socket is that area where the eyes sit. So this is the eye socket. And now we draw the shape of the shape of cheekbone. And we draw the far side of the face. So this gives us a kind of a model where our head is kind of placed. So the bottom of the chin and the shape of the jaw area. Like this. But now Let's attach the neck to the head and the bottom part of the neck and of course the muscles of the neck and the shoulders. So here we are not focusing on the details. We are just trying to draw the overall shape of the of the head, a representation of the head. So now let's go and divide the face into three, and that gives us the famous thirds, which are the hairline the brow line, the bottom of the nose, and the bottom of the chin. After we do that, we can draw a curve from the side of the face to divide the head into two major planes, which are the front plane and the side plane. So you double check your measurement to see if there is anything that you can correct at this uh, early stage. So here for the far side forehead, you can chop off the side a little bit to match with the, with the structure of our reference photo. 
Now let's draw the ear just to make sure that the tilt of the head is correct. So the ear, the ear sits in one of the of this side here. So it sits right here in the quarter of the the side plane of the cranium. So let's draw simple shapes first and later on we can add details. Now the first thing you want to start with I like to start with is the nose. The nose helps me draw the other features accordingly. So I don't have to draw the center line of the face, but maybe I should draw it just to help keep things in perspective. And now let's look for the the placement of the nose and here from the far side brow line we can identify the first line of the nose which is going to be the keystone shape or let's say the globella so when we identify that we can go ahead and establish the 3d box of the of the nose so you want to start with the simple shape first then draw them in 3d and later on you can add the details so let's go we have draw the box um, in 3d you have to understand the basic planes of of any shape so the planes are going to help us draw 3d uh, objects we have the top plane the side plane and of course the bottom plane of this nose let's come here and correct the shape of the cheekbone so I feel like I need to bring that a bit closer to to the nose. Let's establish the proportion of the, the lips. I usually try to identify the top lip, which is going to be roughly somewhere here, and the bottom lip. And in between those two lines, I look for the line of the mouth, which is going to be a straight line. And depending on the perspective of the head, that line is going to change uh, the tilt. Now let's go and draw the shape of the chin, just to bring in some likeness. Okay, so now we can add the hair and it's pretty simple. You draw very simple shapes on top of uh, your cranium. So you don't have to follow exactly the reference photo but it's important to make sure that the proportion is correct so we have very simple representation of the hair so now let's go and draw a straight line for our eyes and this is where the eyes are gonna sit so from the corners of the nose we draw a straight line to find the inner corner of one of the eyes and you draw a dot to see the width of the eyes in comparison to the other side and in three quarter poses because of foreshortening the eye that is close to the camera is going to be relatively bigger than the eye that is far from the camera because this is perspective this is foreshortening and now let's just draw some simple shape of the eyebrows but the eyebrows are gonna sit on top of the brow line maybe let's draw the actual nose the far side first one line that is coming upward and then it's going downward and this is basically the bridge of the nose 
and we attach that to the ball of the nose which is the uh, cartilage and now to the bottom of the nose and we fo it follows uh, that plane like this and we attach that to the wings of the nose draw that ball of the nose the far side cheekbone The drawing might not look like the reference photo at this stage, but when, once we add the features, and if you place them correctly, it's gonna start looking like the reference photo eventually. So now let's try to draw the filtrum, which is this, um, this little hole here. The top lip, Far side lip, just wrapping around the corners, so the inner side of that line, let's add some structure on top of the lips. the bottom lip so for the bottom lip I advise you to draw simple lines and only one line at the bottom and do not draw these lines here to connect them because that will not bring the, the, the structure as it should just leave it like this and now the chin and the bottom of the chin let's come here and draw the planes of the eyes so we have one major plane right here and we have another plane that connects to the nose and now let's go and draw the other eye so usually I draw the eyeballs first and sometimes I just don't draw them it depends on how I feel about the the thing so we have we draw three lines for the top eyelid uh, for the top eyelid and two lines for the bottom eyelid and it has this angle right here so always observe that angle of the bottom eyelid and the relationship with the top eyelid so now we draw the upper eyelid and the lower eyelid and now you draw the iris before you draw the iris you can go here and draw the other side use this first eye that you established to draw the other side uh, the other eye so let's start with the top eyelid the um, upper eyelid and they have to stay on the same line, the same perspective. Now you draw the bottom eyelid. And we clearly see that top plane of the bottom eyelid. So you can bring that out as well. Like this. And you draw the iris. And as you notice, we don't see much of um, the iris because it's hidden by the bridge of the nose. Yeah. So now let's come here and add some more structure to our drawing. So the forehead, we draw two lines. Yeah, this, this big bone here for the, for the brows. Yeah, so we have like two planes, one top plane and two side, two side planes. So um, what's left? So I made the neck too small, so let me go and correct that. Yeah. 
No, so I made a slight mistake here for the body. So I'm gonna correct that. Yeah, I think this is more correct. So now we're gonna use the Asaro method on top of this um, on top of this portrait. The first measure plane that I think is the most important is this plane right here, the side plane of the face. So we're gonna use the Asaro method and try to identify the, those planes. This is the cheekbone plane and it's one of the most important. So we draw a straight line from the from here or well, sometimes it's a straight line from the side of the eye socket and at a time it's just here from the cheekbone to the back of the jaw area so we have we already have one plane and another plane within the side planes of the head and we draw a straight line and as you can see it follows the same curve we've drawn um, earlier in this in the drawing and here we have another plane and it's also one of the most important and that plane is the plane of the mouth area so in the three quarter view that plane is really visible and it's really helpful if you place that correctly here we have a top plane and a side a front plane and a top plane and as you can see the structure of the head is popping out so these are the very simplified versions very simplified version of the asaro method these are the major major planes of the asaro head so let me draw this plane of this bottom plane of the mouth area so we have top plane front plane and bottom plane you can go and learn the most complex planes like here but if you learn this this ones it's enough to help you draw better structure it's gonna really help you when it comes to shading yeah there is another plane here for the neck so i'm gonna make sure i draw that as well so i have two planes for the neck like this front plane and the bottom plane of that part and of course the side plane and as you can see they match with the muscles of the neck i feel like i need to i need to correct that so let's correct the hair so we have we have one big stroke here yeah like this and then even the hair, it can be simplified into planes. We can divide that into planes. But for the hair, it's a lot more difficult because of the structure of the hair. Really, um, you have to pay more attention to draw, to be able to spot those planes and simplify them. like that we have done the most important parts now we can just relax and start shading but before we have to make sure that everything is going pretty well so we have this plane right here under plane of um, the eye socket and you can group them into one or three planes for example we have one plane which is going to be a side plane a uh, front plane and another side plane here and we have another small plane of um, you know the transition between the the eye socket and the side of the bridge of the nose yeah I think that's pretty it that's pretty it we 
we can go ahead and start shading but i'm not gonna shade because i'm running out of time so in the next video i'm gonna show you how to shade this reference photo on top of you know those plates we have drawn so thanks so much guys for watching i hope you've learned something i didn't want to take too much of your time and i really wanted to go as simple as possible because there's so much to learn there's so much things that i have to show you and so thanks so much if you liked watching the video please make sure you hit the subscribe button and share it to your friends thanks so much see you in the next video bye